Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it was sent to me by one of our dear sisters. So this is the translation of a message that she sent to me. The translation reads like this. Hello, Brother Nashi, how are you? Can you please post my own story as hidden identity? So even when I was still in university, I was known as the most beautiful woman. And the the guys that I used to date, they were like uh, one of the most beautiful women here in Harare. My looks were a blessing, but they also became a curse to me. This was after I had started dating this other guy who was my lecturer at university. So he started introducing me to some very questionable characters that were involved in his life. You know that in university, whenever uh, they want to bring in like satanic forces, they always start with those ones that are young. What I am about to confess to you, it is something that has been haunting me for many, many years and something that I have been hiding from everyone that I know. It is a story of how I was lured into darkness and how I was used as a tool for distraction and how I then got defeated by the power of God. And I thought that me hating God, this was going to make me to become more than powerful than he was, but his power was greater than anything that I could have ever imagined. It all began a few years ago when I was approached by a wealthy man. Uh, he used to be a friend of the lecturer that I was dating. So this lecturer had taken me to this all-white party. Ladies, they need to be careful with these parties that have some strange rituals and dress codes. I was taken to this all-white party at this other house in the suburbs here in Harare. When I was there, that was when I met a very wealthy man who promised me everything that I could ever want. He said, I can give it to you all, money, luxury, power. At that time, I was struggling to make ends meet, living a life that was very far from what I wanted because most of the people, they would say that with your beauty, don't you know that you can even date the president? The man, all the men that I was dating, they could not afford me even though I was dating them. So this man, when he approached me, it was like he knew my weakness. He knew exactly how he was supposed to entice me. Before I even knew it, I was drawn into a world that I never thought that I'll ever be part of. He had introduced me to a group of people, most of these people, they were, they were involved in these rituals, money-making rituals, but there was something that was even more darker, something that was even more sinister. They were powerful and influential, and they saw something in me that I didn't even see in myself. They told me that my beauty, it was a gift. There was even one who told me that I looked more like an angel, and it meant for a higher purpose they wanted me to use it so as to destroy another man and unfortunately i cannot tell you the man the name of that pastor a powerful pastor he used to be a pastor at this other church that was in harare at that time when they started to target him but he then was moved from Harare and he was now in Blawayo. He was doing God's work in Blawayo. So he was bringing hope. That was what they did not want. They don't want anyone to bring hope. People, they are not supposed to have hope in this life. So this pastor, I was told that he was a threat to them. He was more like a light, a little light in the darkness that were trying to spread and they needed him gone. At first, I refused because I was so scared. I had heard so many stories of people getting rich and after they would have gotten rich, then they will die. I did not understand why they needed me because I was not important. All that I had was my beauty. Why could they not just deal with him in their own way? I asked, but they were too persuasive and the more that they talked with me, the more that they convinced me that this was my destiny and I was entirely chosen for this mission. They promised me wealth that was beyond my wildest dreams, power over anyone who dared to cross me and a life of luxury that I had only ever dreamt of. Blinded by greed and ambition, I totally I agreed. I was given instructions on how to approach the pastor, how to gain his trust and to ultimately destroy him. They told me not to be too forward with him, but to use my beauty. Slowly but surely, they said that you are going to win him over. 
to make him fall in love with you, to seduce him so that he can get between your legs. Once he has gotten himself between your legs, then it is over. And once you would be under my spell, they said, you would be weakened. You would no longer preach the true gospel. You will become vulnerable and they could take him down. They said, we will take him down and it is going to be very easy. So I missed that opportunity. Maybe when he was still in Harare, there was this other time. If I had just gone back to his office, he had called me on that day, but I just hesitated. He said, come here. I want to see you. But I just said, I'll come another time. Then I had that. He was in Blawayo. Loads and loads of money were given to me. I was staying at this other house that belongs to this other satanic agent who is based in Blawayo. I traveled to Blawayo. My heart was pounding with fear. I then went to his church, one of his church services. And from the moment that I looked at him, I knew that this was not going to be easy, even though we had had some interactions in Harare, but this time around, it was going to be something that was real. There was something about him, a presence that was so powerful. It's not like he is a man that performs miracles, but the way that he preaches the word of God, there is a presence that is so powerful, so pure, that it made me to question everything that I had agreed to do, the contract that I had signed with the devil. But I pushed those doubts aside, reminding myself that what was at stake was me becoming a multi-millionaire. I managed well to get close to him, to start having conversation with him. This was after I had allowed another guy who was a church usher to sleep with me. And he was the one who got me really close to this pastor. The pastor, when I got so close to him, he was kind, humble, and so, and so full of faith that it made me to become uncomfortable. The more that I tried to charm him, the more I felt like I was the one who was being exposed and my true intentions as if they were being laid bare before him. He never looked at me. This really troubled me with lust or desire, only with a deep, unshakable love for God and for the people that he served. As time went on, I found myself struggling to carry out the mission. Each and every attempt that I made to seduce him, to lead him astray, it was like this man, he was just avoiding and avoiding him, not from him, but from something else, something that I could not see or understand. This man he was being protected by an angel, and I saw an angel. This was after I had told myself that I needed to go and see him. I was really wearing this very short skirt. Even when I was walking, people were just looking at me. And the moment that I got close to his church, that was when I saw an angel, a very tall angel. At first, when I saw this angel, I thought that it was a tower light. But the more that I walked closer and closer to the church, that was when I said, ha, ah, this tower light, why is it? It is moving. Then that tower light turned around and it faced me. And I saw that this was no tower light, but it was an angel, a very tall one. And I got scared and I felt so weak. Then I returned back to my mind. Masters. Then one night after I had been given some charms to use, everything changed. He called me. When he called me, it was just after 3 p.m. He had invited me to his place for dinner. So I was planning to make my final move. But when I arrived there, Brother Nashi, he looked at me with eyes that seemed to see right through me. He told me that he knew who I was that he knew why I was there, my heart stopped. How could he have ever known? I had tried to be careful, but he was angry. He was not angry, neither was he afraid. He simply told me that God had revealed my mission to him and that he had been praying for me. In that moment, I broke everything that I had been holding, the lies, the deception. I confessed everything to him tears streaming down my face. I told him about the people who had sent me, about the promises of making me to become a multimillionaire and being taken out of him, going to any country where I wanted, about how I had allowed myself to be used for something so evil. He did not judge me. He did not condemn me. Instead, instead, he prayed for me. He prayed for my soul and he said, I want to to give your life to Jesus Christ and the power of his prayer and the love in his words. It was as if it was a light breaking through the darkness that had consumed me, that had consumed me for life. 
After that night, I then left Bulawayo, then I returned back to Harare with nothing but a deep sense of shame and regret. I had totally failed my mission, but more than that, I had failed the people who had sent me. Those people that had sent me, they cut all the ties. That is why I failed to graduate at university because the lecturer, he just kept on failing me. But even though I lost everything, I found something that was for, far much more valuable, which is my soul. This is my confession. I was sent to destroy a man of God, but instead... In my mission to destroy him, I was the one who was saved. I was blinded by the love of money, but it was the power of God that opened my eyes. I have spent each and every day trying to pray, to ask God for you for his forgiveness for what I have done, trying to live a life that honors the grace that I was shown. I don't know if I'll ever be free of the guilt that I carry, but I am no longer the woman that I was. I feel as if God, God gave me a second chance and I will never waste the second chance that was given to me by God. Dear listeners, right there was a message that was sent to me by one of our dear sister strange things do happen in this world she's saying that my beauty it was more like a curse to me your 